Hello and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to take a look at a unique meter and this one measures magnetism and interestingly the case is held together with magnets. I guess that's fitting. So let's get into this thing. There's not a whole lot in English on it so we'll have to kind of figure out some of this stuff on our own. That's okay comes with test lead. It's actually multi-conductor cable. Looks like it's five pin. And it comes with a screwdriver. Small, I'm not sure if that's Phillips or JIS or what. Here's our meter itself. We'll have to figure out what type of battery it takes. Get a battery in it. Before we even go to put a battery in it, I'm going to hook up the test lead just to be on the safe side. A lot of times this sort of stuff, get the twists out of that, a lot of times this sort of stuff does not like being turned on without everything hooked up. And we don't want to do any damage to it right off the bat. So let's get our test lead hooked up and use this supplied screwdriver which doesn't fit the best but it'll work to see is this screwdriver captured or is the screw captured or are we going to lose it? No, we're going to lose it. Okay, so it takes a 9 volt battery and it appears to have some Molex connectors inside there perhaps for additional uses Let's get our 9 volt battery in. For inside of meters, I like to use these Procell Duracells. They are kind of like a constant low current rated battery. They're supposed to last longer and they're not supposed to do the acid thing as much. So I'm kind of experimenting with them. I'm either going to have a tragedy a few years from now with the stuff that I have them in, or I'm going to be very pleased I did it. Okay, so we're in with our battery. Let's see if that wants to sit differently. I think that's it. It's not too bad. Got our battery in. Let's get our battery cover on. Just like that. And we will get our screw started. Okay, and that's good we did that by putting the lead on because this thing automatically turned on. So a few nice things here. This thing has a battery meter, so as the battery dies we'll kind of know. Looks like it's backlit. Nice feature. We can switch between two scales and those scales are millitesla and gauss so there's our gauss scale and there is our millitesla scale now that is interesting because I happen to have two old gauss meters and I thought maybe it would be a good way to test them so we're going to play around with a few other things and these meters are kind of getting ready for those projects. So I thought it would be interesting to set this to the Gauss scale and see, I do believe this comes loose, I think that's the way it's supposed to come apart. This has the reader which you can get a little closer to things or you can leave your probe together and just have it protected. So, might look into the manual a little bit further but thought we'd look for something that is magnetized and see if we can test Let's magnetize this screwdriver with a magnetizing tool 
and see if our meter reads how magnetized it is. Oh, that's actually pretty magnetized according to that meter. Let's see what we get here. Let's take it out of this. Okay, so we're getting similar results when we get it right on there. That was wanting to peg this scale, if you remember. See, there we go. I'm not going to peg the scale of the analog meter. It's not a good practice, I say as I peg it. But we're getting close to full scale there, 25. And we have over that. Now this one... This one is not as responsive. So either it needs a bigger field or it is not working properly. Both are possible. So, very fascinating. I think this meter is fairly accurate. I don't know that that one is. So let's put our plastic back on and see, so that gives you a spacer. This may be more, to have the plastic on it, might be more of a thing for finite measurements. And this is more for larger fields because you don't need to get as close and it's not gonna matter as much. So I think that's probably how that's configured, which is very interesting. Now, that being said, this should be an auto-ranging meter. So let's see what happens when we get close to this permanent magnet that I used to magnetize that tool. It's reading some magnetism. Uh, that's interesting. So I'm hoping this tool will work out for us for what we're looking to do in a future video with some magnetism. It appears as though my workbench has some magnetism in it, which I can back up by when I move this meter around on the bench. Must be something in there with a magnet, and we're picking up its field. So not really a whole lot to go over on this, other than it's a meter that measures magnetism. and. We can go in two different scales. We can put a backlight on, we can put a hold on it. It's a simple basic meter for reading data points, which is great. It wasn't super expensive. I splurged a little for the one that is not the horseshoes and hand grenades. It's got a little bit more accuracy in it, as evident by the two there instead of a five. Did not go for the one, figured like most things, I'd go middle of the road. But hopefully this thing will work out good for us. I have some very specific plans for it. If you have a Gauss meter of any kind, or have a need to read magnetism, let me know in the comments below. Have you used these meters? Do you have issues with this specific type of meter or anything like that? I find that stuff interesting in a dialogue. I, I'd like to hear that. Leave it in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.